Projexus is proud to introduce HyperUA, an exciting new technology complement to the OPC UA standard. We're going to take a quick look at the core concepts behind HyperUA and see it in action. So let's get started. First of all, what is HyperUA? At Projexus, we like to say that HyperUA equals OPC plus web, and that with HyperUA, it's possible to connect OPC directly to the web. HyperUA is all about REST, an architectural style that essentially governs behavior of the web's participants. HyperUA adds RESTful web capabilities to OPC UA, which isn't provided for by the OPC specifications. But let's get more concrete. By the way, this video is recorded in high definition, so you'll want to bump up your playback resolution using the YouTube controls if you haven't done so already. What I have here is a virtual Windows server hosted on the Rackspace cloud in Dallas. I'm going to fire up a Kepware product called Kepserver EX. I already have it set up to front end as an OPC UA server to a familiar HMI application. Now let's start up the classic Wonderware InTouch Batch Reactor demo from the mid-1990s. Okay, great. The demo is up and running. If we launch the Kep Server config screen, we'll be able to communicate with InTouch using Kepware's OPC Quick Client application. First, we'll select the InTouch channel, and now the demo device, and now we can launch the OPC Quick Client. Having selected the intouch.demo folder, if we scroll down a bit, we can see the various runtime variables inside InTouch, such as reactor temperature and product level. Kepware is getting the data by way of its InTouch driver and is presenting the information to the Quick Client application as a set of nodes in an OPC UA address space. For the purposes of our demo, the Quick Client represents a traditional Windows-based OPC client. Using OPC UA service calls made from the Quick Client, we can also write to InTouch. Here's the output valve in the InTouch HMI. And now let's find the OPC UA node, which corresponds to the output valve in the Quick Client. And there it is. Now, if we right click, we can call up a menu to let us execute a synchronous write, which corresponds to the write service call in the OPC UA specifications. We'll set the value to one or Boolean true. And if we go back to the InTouch HMI, we'll see that that indeed was reflected back into the system. Now, let's toggle it back to, to false using the HMI control. When we talk about the possibility of RESTful web connectivity to OPC UA, what do we mean? The question at hand is whether it would be possible to use a plain old web browser to access the OPC UA server running inside Kep Server EX thus giving us direct web connectivity to InTouch on the back end. For many use cases in industrial automation, there could be a ton of advantages to leveraging RESTful web connectivity instead of relying on traditional heavy client applications. For example, what if we'd like to connect a typical desktop browser, such as Google's Chrome? Or how about Mozilla Firefox? Or what about the stock mobile web browser in it running in an iPhone? Or how about something really bare bones, like a text-based web browser running in a Unix terminal? With HyperUA, it's possible to do all that. But to really appreciate HyperUA, we'll want to talk briefly about existing approaches for connecting OPC to the web. The OPC specifications basically offer two possible mechanisms for client-server communication. The first is a binary protocol over TCP IP. While the binary protocol is great for many use cases, it's mostly a non-option for web clients. Since most are generally restricted to using the HTTP protocol over TCP IP, some browsers might be able to load a plugin or extension which implements OPC UA's binary protocol, but at that point we'd no longer be talking about a web client, strictly speaking, and cross-browser support could be highly limited. Another possibility is leveraging OPC UA's technology mapping to SOAP XML web services over HTTP. SOAP XML is a fine technology in some scenarios, but it's not what we're after when we talk about connecting OPC UA to the RESTful web. I'll explain a bit further. SOAP XML and REST are two very different architectural styles for building web services. 
While SOAP XML has certain strengths, it more or less excludes simple connectivity from plain vanilla web clients. Every SOAP XML web service introduces a custom interface on top of HTTP, a set of verbs, if you will, that require implementation of a client-side application for communicating with the server. For a stock desktop or mobile browser to communicate with an OPC UA server using SOAP XML, it would be necessary for the client to load or already have loaded some heavyweight JavaScript program or even a Java applet or Silverlight app. That might be a viable option for some web clients, but would exclude others. For example, an embedded device with a simple HTTP stack. A related issue is that OPC UA's technology mapping for SOAP XML involves a stateful model of communication. That is, where the server explicitly maintains client state between requests. That's decidedly not what we're after when we talk about RESTful web connectivity. Common approaches for providing conventional web connectivity to OPC applications involve bolting on a web server, which may communicate directly with OPC, or access a database which stores historical data recorded for that application. This can be done well, but common problems can arise. These solutions tend to be either one-off web APIs, or they may be narrow in scope, or both. They may conform to the REST architecture, or they may not. They may involve application logic which is highly reusable, or they may not. Too often, if the scope or needs of the client-side application change, the server-side logic may have to be updated or even rewritten. And depending on how the web API was implemented, client-side logic may have to be reworked as well. Is there a better way to deal with these issues? Yes, and that's where HyperUA comes into the picture. HyperUA sits as a standalone server, logically in between OPC applications and RESTful web clients. On one side, HyperUA totally encapsulates OPC UA client server communication, acting as a true OPC UA client to one or many OPC UA servers on behalf of its web clients. And on the other, it provides a proper REST API, which completely maps OPC UA standard services to a well defined set of hypermedia representations, links, and forms. If there are changes to, to the configuration and makeup of the OPC application, that's fine. HyperUA itself doesn't have to be re-engineered. It simply acts as an OPC UA client and will go with the flow. If needs change for our web clients, then those client applications simply need to be fine-tuned regarding how they interact with HyperUA's API. That API itself is well-defined and fully generalized with respect to OPC UA's data and services models. HyperUA offers web clients a true REST API. Exploration of just how HyperUA conforms to REST will be the subject of future demonstrations. For now, we can briefly hit the highlights. For one, it's stateless. Web client state is not maintained in a HyperUA server. Each HTTP request contains enough information to service that request without employing cookies or session tokens in the URL. The API is explicit about resource cacheability and is well behaved in the context of layered web services, for example, load balancers and transparent caches. HyperUA provides a uniform interface in terms of its representations and HTTP request methods. Instead of hoisting another vocabulary on top, like SOAP XML, HyperUA's representations are also well suited to use in mashup applications. Finally, the whole API is driven by a principle known as HATIOS, or Hypermedia as the Engine of Application State. It's time now to dig into our first look at HyperUA in action. I'm interested in addressing and controlling that output valve node we saw earlier, so we'll use HyperUA in some web browsers to do just that. On the right, as before, we have Wonderware's InTouch Batch Reactor demo running on a virtual Windows server hosted on the Rackspace cloud. Kepserver EX is running alongside InTouch, providing it with an OPC UA front end. On the left, I have a Hyper UA server running in the foreground of a terminal session connected to a virtual Linux server hosted in New York. I'll bring a Chrome web browser into view and initiate a web request to Hyper UA. Hyper UA's REST API organizes resources in terms of collections and items many of which correspond directly to concepts defined by OPC UA, 
while a few of them are artifacts of our implementation. The first step in connecting to an OPC UA application is querying a discovery server. So we'll navigate to the discovery server's collection. It starts out empty, so let's add our discovery server reference. We'll click on the link to, to the create form for this collection and input the information for the KEP server we have running in Dallas. Every OPC UA server can act as its own discovery server, so this works fine for our demo. After clicking the Create button, we're immediately redirected to the discovery server item resource we just created. If we go back to the parent collection, we'll see it listed there. Let's go back to the item resource, note a few things, and move ahead. Whereas Hyper UA collection resources are simple lists of links, Hyper UA item resources always indicate a set of attributes proper to Hyper UA artifacts, OPC UA concepts, or both. Attribute values may indicate numbers, text strings, and possibly links to related resources. Item representations also provide lists of links to collection resources associated with the item's class or type, in this case, discovery server. Those are organized under the heading Edges. We'll see links to available forms as we did at the collection level. Now we'll follow the link to the service collection for this discovery server item. We actually just performed an OPC UA service call using the find server service encapsulated inside the Hyper UA server. Note that our web client did this simply by making a state transition, that is, by following a web link. Note also the link to find servers organized under the heading OPC UA services. We could actually perform a customized service call by submitting the form for that service. However, for our simple demo setup, that wouldn't be too interesting, and I'd like to get on with creating a client session on the OPC UA server. Going back to the server collection resource, we'll follow the link to the one server item that's indicated. You can see in the OPC UA attributes list the data returned from the find server service call. Let's go ahead and follow the link to this server item's server endpoints collection. Okay, we just made another service call by following a web link, namely OPC UA's get endpoint service. Let's move on to the first server endpoint item listed on the page. Scrolling down past the attribute lists, we'll follow the link to the item's application sessions collection. Not surprisingly, it's empty. So let's create a session. We'll indicate Kepware session as the name and invoke the service call by clicking Create. We need to follow up by invoking the Activate Session service call. After following the link, we'll submit the form. And voila! We just completed two OPC UA service calls, and we now have an active session which is encapsulated on the Hyper UA server. Note that something rather ephemeral, a client-server session, has become a concrete, addressable resource through HyperUA's API. Moving on, we can start digging into the OPC UA server's address space. The address space is a collection-level resource, a collection of OPC UA nodes, and the default browse service call that gets invoked when we follow the link simply returns a one-item list, that is, a link to the root node in the address space. Navigating to the root node item resource, we see the usual layout of attribute lists and links to edge collections and service call forms. But note too that each node has another list, which may be empty, of references defined for that node in the OPC UA server's address space. We'll follow the reference to objects, then the reference to InTouch, and now to demo. The list of references for this node pretty much corresponds to the list of nodes we saw in the OPC Quick Client at the beginning of this demo. Let's take another look at that list now. We'll call up the Quick Client, which is already running, and there it is, it's a spot on match. All right, let's go back to the web browser and find the link to the output valve node. Great, we've achieved our first goal. 
Now, let's use the web form which corresponds to OPC UA's write service call to toggle the valve. We'll set the value to true. We'll click the write button. And there you go. Notice that happened almost instantly despite the geographical distance between the two virtual servers and the fact the web browser is running on my Mac laptop in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, if we have a truly stateless system, we should be able to get right back to this node using only the URI, even if we give the browser a cold start. Let's try it. First, I'll copy the URI into the Mac laptop's clipboard. Then I'll terminate Chrome. All right, now I'll restart Chrome. And I'll paste the link into the address bar. And now we're back in action. We should be able to copy and paste the link into Firefox too and see that it works. Okay, there you go, another demonstration of statelessness. Now, let's bring up the iPhone and try the same with mobile Safari. Okay, great, we're in. Let's toggle the valve again, just to see if it's working. First, we'll need to navigate to the right service call form. There it is. We'll input the value true once again. All right, and then we'll click the right button. Okay, we got it. Now, how about the text mode browser running in the Unix terminal? Will it work also? Let's see that in action. So we brought up the terminal here. We'll enter the URL as we did for the other browsers. Okay, great, we jump straight to the node. Obviously, we get a pretty simple readout of the node's representation. We'll navigate to the right form. And we'll get down to the value field. We'll indicate true. And we'll submit the form by pressing return. Yep, it sure worked. And that brings up an important point I want to mention again. While HyperUA's representations feature some CSS and JavaScript, which makes them a little easier on the eyes, the API is driven entirely by the semantic HTML. That is, by making state transitions in the web client by following links and submitting forms. Even with JavaScript ignored or disabled, the entire API is fully traversable with the simplest of web clients. There's a whole lot more to talk about, but we've now covered all the basics in our introduction to HyperUA. Thank you for watching this introductory video. Projexus will be sharing more demonstration videos in the near future, so please check back at our website or YouTube channel. In upcoming demos, we'll take a closer look at HyperUA's API, explore various use cases, and interact with the HyperUA server using a variety of web clients. We invite you to learn more about HyperUA and our vision for the future, and how your company can become a Projexus OEM. Please visit our website and feel free to shoot us an email with any questions you may have. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook.